What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how you can create header styles for any of your UI projects, be it news websites, e-commerce websites, company website, blog, anyone. So the header styles are going to be dynamic enough for you to apply on any of your projects. In front of what we already have a components that I've gone ahead to create. I've added icons to the library. I've added buttons already. There is a tutorial on this. So if you haven't watched that, I'm going to add a link in the description box. I've also added a logo. Then when we go to our local variables, I've gone ahead to add our color palette, our spacing values, and our radius, which we have already applied to the buttons. So if you haven't watched any of these tutorials because I've already covered this, I'm also going to attach it in the description box. So we're going to go ahead to start creating a header. We already have our sketches here. Today we are going to be working on this and hopefully in the next tutorial, we're going to cover this and the next one, which is going to be a little bit advanced. Before we start creating a header, we'll start by creating a navigation link component. And that is because it has states. So when you hover over a navigation link, it's supposed to give the user some sort of a feedback. It could be a change in color or the font size. In this case, it's just going to be a change in color. So we'll start by creating a navigation link. Come to the toolbar, select the text tool, and we're going to click once, and we'll just call this home. So a navigation link could have a drop down which is going to be our second option. So for the first one, I want to give this a fixed width. It doesn't have to be this way, but in this case, I want us to use a fixed width. So our fixed width is going to be, make sure that this is selected. We're going to increase the width and we'll just give this 96. That's going to be for a navigation link without a drop down. The second one is going to have a drop down. So we're going to the assets tab where I've already added our components. I will just type in arrow. So we're going to be using this arrow. I will just drag and drop this inside here. And we'll need to downsize this because it's 24 by 24, but I want it to be 16. So we're going to constrain the properties, click once on the icon, and we're going to give this 16 and hit the enter key on our keyboard. So I'm okay with the icon size here. I will select this and this, and we're going to hit Shift A to give this an auto layout. And the gap between these two elements is going to be 16. So we are good with this. And this, we are now going to create a hover state. We'll duplicate this, and our hover state is going to be this gold color. So make sure that this is selected. Scroll to where we have selection colors because it's going to pick out all the colors from the selected elements And we're going to give this the gold color So you can use any other color if you're following with me I think I'm going to attach the Figma file so you just follow with the tutorial But if you are following with your own tutorial files, then you just need to give it another color for practice sake We've created our navigation elements. We'll need to add this now to our components library So we're going to select this and we'll come to where we have the component icon, click on the drop down, and we're going to create a component set. The next thing we're going to do is to give this a name. So this component is going to be called navigation. We'll just give it for short now. And we'll now have to give this properties and value. So the property name is going to be state, and the value is going to be normal and hover state. And there's another thing we'll have to create. We need to create another variant just because this navigation is going to have one with the right icon and one without the right icon or without any icon at all. So I think we're going to start by creating a variation. So we'll create a variant. Make sure this is selected. Click on the plus button on the properties tab. And we're going to click on variant. And the variant is going to be called right icon. The value for this is going to be true for now. When you're done, we're going to click on create property. So this is true, but this is false because it doesn't have any icon. So make sure that you select the first navigation item and we are going to give this a value of false. We'll also select this. I will come to the drop down and select the force that we just created. So this is a navigation item, but there's still going to be an error because we haven't given them the various states. So this and this is going to have a state of normal. 
while this and this is going to have a state of hover and we're going to do something real quick we're just going to add a little bit of uh, animation and we're going to prototype this so if in case one the test is out if you hover over this it's going to change to this so making sure that this is selected we're going to come to our prototype tab click once on it and we're going to do something simple so select the first one remember this is the hover state and we're going to bring it to this so what do we want we want that if you hover over this, it's going to change to the hover state. And if you hover over this, it's going to change to this state. So make sure that you select the trigger is supposed to be while hovering. Great. So I forgot to change the animation type. So it's going to be smart animate. We're going to come back to this. We're going to click on the arrow here. And we're going to select our animation to smart animate great now we're going to go back to our design tab and one thing that we did not change was the property name so we need to change this to states i noticed it while we were prototyping so you make sure that this is changed first before you go to your prototype tab now that we have created our navigation items and added them to our component library we're going to create our very first header style so i will just duplicate this bring this here so we can use this as a point of reference and we're going to start with the logo the logo is already in our component library so i'll just type in logo we'll bring this down and we we'll now need to add the navigation item so we already created that so i'll just click and type nav we'll bring this down and the next thing is going to be the call to actions, which is the sign in and get started. I don't know if you can see, but this is it. So we already added this in the form of buttons. I will type in button and we'll bring this down. The button already has variants. We just need to change it when we get to this stage. The first thing we're going to do is to adjust our logo using our layout grid. And we'll add all our navigation items. So I'll just duplicate this, duplicate and duplicate and duplicate. The first navigation item is about. The second is services. Sorry. Services. The third is features. The fourth is blog. And the Fifth is contact. Okay, so that is our navigation, and we'll now need to add the CTAs. I will duplicate this, we'll call our first CTA sign in, and our second CTA is going to be get started. But I want us to change the variance to primary because this is what we're going to be using so we'll just call this get started um we need to change the i because the style we're using we're using a capitalized style for our text okay so we've added our various elements and what i want us to do now is to group this so we're going to create sections this is going to be the first section the second section which is the navigation items themselves and the last is going to be the CTA. So we'll start by selecting these, hitting Shift A to give these an auto layout. And we want to add a gap between these elements. Let's see, we're going to select 16 for our gap. We're going to select this two, hit Shift A. And our gap here is going to also be 16. It doesn't have to be 16. It can still be 24. It could be 20. But I'm just trying to maintain the spacing of values for consistency so we've created that we've added the gaps now the last thing or the next thing we're going to do is to make sure that you're going to add the spacing between these elements so make sure that all of them are selected hit shift a on your keyboard then the next thing we're going to do is to come to where we have auto layout come to the very center where we have align center and we are going to double click on it. So it's going to add automatic gaps in between the various elements. Now, after adding the automatic gaps, 
we are now going to come to where we have the horizontal padding, which is going to add padding on the left and the right. And we're going to give it a value of 120. And we're giving it a value of 120 because currently our layout grid has a value for the left and right margin of 120. So you see everything is planned right from the beginning. The last thing I'm going to do now is to add a vertical padding. So making sure this is still selected, we're going to come here and let's see, we can try 20 for a uh, vertical padding. Let's increase it again and we could give this 48. Yeah, so I think 48 is fine. And we'll just drag this to the edge of the frame and drag this to the edge of the frame. So you notice that the padding on the left and on the right is still maintained. Everything is still maintained. Now we have created our header style, but we can't really see the change because first our home background is white. So let's add something small to the design. We'll turn off our layout grid. Make sure that the frame is selected. Come to where you have a layout grid. If you have one, we're going to click on the eye icon to make it invisible. Then we're going to align this to the top. Making sure that this is selected, we're going to come to where we have align to top. Click once and it aligns to the top. Now we'll come to where we have the effects. We click on the plus button and we're going to add a drop shadow. Now the drop shadow is showing this just because we haven't added a background to the entire frame containing the various header elements. So we need to add a background to this and which is going to be white. So making sure that this is still selected, I will zoom in so you can see it because it can happen to any of us. Making sure this is selected, come to where we have fill under our design tab, click once, and we're going to click on the white color. So it has fixed that for us. So we are good to go. We are going to go back to our drop down because I want us to make sure that it's a little bit subtle. With this header still selected, come to where we have some sort of a light icon called the effect setting. Click on it. And we're going to give the Y axis a value of 12. The blur value is going to be 24. And the transparency, we're going to take it right down to about 10. So it should be subtle. Great. So guys, we have succeeded in creating a cool header, simple header style that can be used on any of your projects. So can we test this out? Yes. So let's just test out the navigation links to see if it really works. So making sure that the home is selected, we're going to click on this. Then we are going to click on the presentation view. We'll wait for it to load. And let's see, let's hover and you notice that it changes. So it changes because we give this a hover state. We're going to do one last thing. We'll return to the design tab and we have to create a header component. And that's because we're going to be creating multiple screens. And if we want to make a change on the header, all we need to do is to go back to the main component, make the change there and all the other screens are going to be affected. So make sure that your header is selected. Then we are going to come to where we have the create component icon, click once and we have created a component. We will just need to give this component a name, header style, header style one. And that's because you're going to be creating other header styles to add to this. So when you're done, you hit the enter key on your keyboard and we have created a header style that is very dynamic and that is also part of our components library. If there is something that I have missed out, then please let me know in the comment box. If you have a question, add it to the comment box. I'll be there waiting for you and I'm going to give the answers as best as I can. If you are yet to subscribe, then you are definitely missing out. Now is the time to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because I am always adding new tutorials on this channel. Every week there is something that is to be added. Subscribe guys and thank you so much for watching. Till next time, bye-bye.